Hi, it's Eric White here. In this screencast, I'm going to walk through the steps that I use to solve OpenXML developer problems. One of the questions that we received on the openxmldeveloper.org site is how do you insert a line below a paragraph. I'm going to walk through the steps that I would use to solve this problem or I would use to solve a more complicated problem than this, give you a sense of the tools that I use and how I go about looking at problems. First thing I'm going to do, I've created a directory to hold some files. Let's go into that directory and let's create a Word document. I'm going to call this Word document test1. Let's open up the Word document and let's insert some random text. What I typed there where I said equals rand 3 comma 1, that says insert three paragraphs with one sentence in each paragraph. This is just a way to get some random text into a document really quickly if you need to have some text to work with. So if I wanted to do three paragraphs and three sentences per paragraph, I could do rand of three comma three. So let's come up here and I'm going to type in five dashes. I know that if I type in five dashes, Word automatically knows to create a line in my document. I've done that for many years. I don't know exact the markup that it generates, but there we go. Actually, I don't really want to create a line below that paragraph. What I want to have first is a document with no lines below the paragraph. So I'm going to save that and close it. And I'm going to take test one and I'm going to copy it and paste it makes test one dash copy and I'm going to rename that to test two. I'll open test two, type in some dashes. Now I have two documents that are identical except for one of them has a line below the first paragraph and the other does not. I'm going to save that. Next thing I'm going to do is use the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. I'm going to come over here, compare files and browse for those files before test one, the after is test two. And there I see the differences between those two documents. I can see that there are three parts that have differences. Uh, core.xml and settings.xml and document.xml. I suspect that the difference is in document.xml, but I'll go look at core.xml and I can see here that there's a difference in the revision count. There's a difference in the time modified. That isn't the change that I really care about. And if I come down here in settings and I view that part difference and I can see that there's a difference in RSID values and of course RSID values, those have to do with merging of documents where you have the same source document and it deviates two different ways and then you can merge those changes using Word. Uh, but here's document.xml. I'm guessing that's where the difference is. If I open document.xml, first of all, I can see that there are some changes in bookmarks in the document. But what's really interesting here is that in the first paragraph that there are some differences in the paragraph properties. So I can see that PPR has a child element of PBDR or probably paragraph border. Uh, I'm guessing that that's probably pretty much what I'm interested in. But it would be interesting to go and look at those paragraph properties and look at that bottom element and see what the attributes are on that bottom element. So I'm going to be done for now with the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. I've got Visual Studio running here. Next I'm going to drag and drop test2 with a line on it to Visual Studio and I'm using the power tool for Visual Studio that allows you to drag and drop an OpenXML document to Visual Studio and then explore around in the package. First thing I'm going to do is open up the document. When you open it up, you see the XML as Word wrote that XML, and Word wrote that XML with no insignificant white space. That's one of the 
funny concepts in XML is that there's this notion of significant white space and insignificant white space and the insignificant white space has to do with things like indenting and so on. I'd rather see it with it indented. I want to show you one of the things that I always do is I always go into tools options. I go down in the text editor, down in the XML portion of the text editor, go to formatting, and I always click align attributes each on a separate line when you have a fair number of attributes and particularly when you have a fair number of namespaces declared for a particular element then this allows you to see the XML quite a bit easier. And now that I've set those options I type control E, control D and that formats all of this XML and it formats it with the attributes each on their own line. Here I can see the first paragraph in that document and I can see the PBDR element and the W bottom element. I can see that there's a, a value of single and a size of six and a space of one and color of auto. Let's say I'm more interested in exactly what each of those things are. The way to do that is to come over here and open up the ECMA 376 second edition part one fundamentals and markup language reference. I prefer the PDF version and I'll show you why. If you open up the PDF version and come over here and open up the tab table of contents of the PDF, it allows you to explore the PDF in a pretty easy way. There is one particular section that I spend a vast majority of my time in because I focus a lot in word processing ML. The reason I focus on word processing ML is probably, I don't know, 75% of all OpenXML issues are with word processing ML. I know in this particular case that it's going to be in paragraphs and rich formatting, but let's say I didn't know that that was where this issue was going to be found. So what I can also do is that PBDR, that looks like an element that I could search for. So come back over here and I'm going to look for PBDR. It's just using this search features of Adobe Reader. And I can see down here that PBDR is section 17.3.1.24. If I look down here, word processing ML is section 17 and 3 and 1 and 24. So let's run down here to 24 and there's paragraph borders. I go through and look at this. Really that line below a paragraph, it isn't really a separate element. It's just, it's just a characteristic on that paragraph or you can put a border on the bottom which is the case in this particular circumstance. I can see that the parent elements for PBDR are PPR. There are various places in the OpenXML standard where you find the element PPR. This lists all those various places. I can see that the child elements, I can see there's a bar between bottom, left, right, and top. This bottom is the one that we're really interested in in that's 17.3.1.7 so if I come up here and go 17.317 there is the bottom element this element specifies the border which shall be displayed below a set of paragraphs which have the same paragraph border setting there's an example that shows that so the next thing that I can see here in this bottom element that is defined in the OpenXML standard is that if I run down to the bottom of the element I see the statement this element's content model is defined by the common border properties definition in 17.3.4 so I'll come back over to 17.3.4 there's border properties so now in these border properties I can see a 
bunch of attributes that are defined for that. There's a border color. I could set the color. Let's uh, let's just give this this a shot. So a color value using the RBG color model, whose red, green, and blue values are written as numbers in the range of zero to 50, 255, hex encoded and concatenated. So it looks like it. I could enter in FF0000, and that would change that border to red. Well, let's just give that a shot. Let's come back over here. Instead of saying color auto, I'll say FF0000, and let's save this. Now, I'm not even going to close Visual Studio or close that document in Visual Studio. I'm just going to come back over here and open Test 2, and sure enough, that bottom is red. Close Word. Come back over here. Let's, uh, let's go back over to the standard. Create a frame effect. Specifies whether the specified border should be modified to create a frame effect by reversing the border's appearance from the edge nearest the text. I'm not very interested in that. There's a border shadow. Let's, uh, let's see what that border shadow looks like. So I need to put W colon shadow equals true. So let's pop over here and let's add W colon shadow equals true. I know that equals 1 is the same thing as equals true. I believe I could also set equals true. We'll test that out here in a second. Now I can see that the line is bigger and it does have something of a shadow effect. And let's come back over here just to test. I also believe that this works is if I type in true there, open the document, I get the same result. So true works the same as 1. So that gives me a pretty good idea of how to draw a line below a paragraph. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.